Hey, welcome back, uh, cats and chicks. You know, and, and Offbeat Cinema uh, draws no lines on where it goes to find the uh, new and different and unusual. And uh, uh, tonight we have a special guest uh, who is an author and, uh, and, and kind of a scientist of some sort. And, and, you know, he actually wrote a book called The Stray Shopping Carts of Eastern North America, a guide to field identification. Uh, cats and chicks, welcome Julian Montague. Thank you for having me. Well, uh, I'm so glad you're here because I have uh, so many questions and you know, some I can't even figure out how to ask, but you know, it, it, it's a funny thing that, um, that someone would uh, decide that uh, uh, shopping carts are something to look at because you know, I, a few years ago, I realized that I hadn't had any gainful employment for uh, 20 years, so I kind of decided that was my calling. Why shopping carts? Well, I'm afraid the shopping carts actually sort of demanded it of me. I realized in driving through my area that there were shopping carts everywhere on lawns, tipped over at bus stops, in creeks, and I realized there was no language that we had to really discuss this phenomenon beyond the sort of passive kind of urban decay commentary or just talking about a shopping cart being lost or stolen. So I started to look at shopping carts, follow them, see where they were, where they went, what forces moved them into different places, and I came up with a system for identifying them. There are two main categories. There are false strays and true strays. False strays are ones that go out from the store that they're from and then come back eventually, and there are true strays that go out and never come back. And there are 11 different types of false strays, and there are 22 different types of true strays. 11, and so 30, you've identified 33 different strains of stray shopping carts. Well, it's a little more complicated than that. Well, of course it is. Of Those are actually states that a shopping cart can be in. So one shopping cart could have a number of different uh, categories assigned to it. In other words, it could be a B2 damaged, but it could also be a B14 archaic, meaning the store that it came from is closed. You know, you lost me a B2. And, uh, you know, the, the funny thing about me is that I, I look through your book and, and uh, I, I always uh, see people with shopping carts and I don't see any people in here. Is that like they, did they, are they homesick? Did they get lost? Are they sad for not being at their Target or their uh, supermarket or stuff? Well, the humans are just one force that moves a shopping cart from place to place. Oh, really? And we need to walk away from the sort of anthropocentric view of this kind of activity Anthrop to really wow. understand it. Wow. Uh, you know, um, I just, uh, would, were all the other things to study taken? Is that why you picked shopping cart? Well, I really think that this is quite an important topic. And I think if we had better language to discuss the phenomena that were going around, on around us, we might have a different world. Wow, I'm, uh, I'm, I, I, uh, uh, I know what I want to, I know what I want to say. Tell me a funny story about shopping carts. A funny story. You can reduce my life's work into funny anecdote. This is a serious business. Revised edition.